Good morning all. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Jackery Explorer 1000 portable power station. So what is this thing? Well it's a big box full of lithium-ion batteries, um, 1002 watt hours of lithium-ion batteries and it's got a 1000 watt inverter it's got an MPPT solar charge input, so you can charge it from mains using a power adapter or from another vehicle. And it has some DC outputs, both 12 volt and 5 volt USB, and also on this model, USB-C. So let's get it out of the box. Right, let's take it out of the box. And see what's inside. Well. There's the pouch full of uh, cables and also the uh, mains power adapter. There's also this which says GIFT on it and it's the Solar Saga Parallel Adapter. And here's the power bank. It's the Explorer 1000. Also in the box are the user manual. Uh, the Jackery warranty card and also this which is um, register for an extra 12 months warranty. Let's take a look at the uh, front panel of the Explorer 1000. We've got two UK style shuttered mains outlets. Now they're both connected in parallel to the output of the 230 volt 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. There's a little button there to turn the AC inverter on and off. Here there's a DC section. Now here we have 12 volts, uh, 10 amps from this uh, cigarette lighter accessory socket. And also we have two uh, 5 volt, 2.4 amp USB type A's. Now I can't tell at the moment whether they're both Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 or just the bottom one is, we can test that. But there are two up here USB-C um, outputs. I'm not sure if these are inputs, but we can also test that. At the top of the unit, there's a display, liquid crystal display with a backlight. The backlight turns off quite quickly. Uh, you can see here we've got input power zero watts, output power zero watts, and currently the state of charge is 68%. I have been doing some solar power tests on this. And the input section here consists of a 7.9 millimeter socket for the solar saga 100 plug and also actually the plug on the end of the ac adapter but there's also this anderson power pole two pin connector and that's for use with the solar saga parallel adapter which is supplied with this unit in the pouch we have the car charging lead so you can plug this into a vehicle uh, socket. I believe this is 12 or 24 volts. That has the 7.9 millimeter plug on it. Also in here is a mains uh, plug to this. I think that's called a cloverleaf connector. And the AC power adapter is this one. I'll try and get in on the details here. It is uh, 24 volt, 7.5 amps, 180 watts. On the side of the unit there is a fan outlet. This is quite heavy. I'll get the weight in a moment. There is also a fan inlet and you have a little light. Switch it on, switch it off. And if you hold the button there is an SOS feature. There's a fair old weight to this unit. It's 10 kilos, 22 pounds. Fine if you're just bringing it out from an RV or a caravan. Uh, I wouldn't want to work, walk half a mile with this thing though. It is a fair old weight. And here is a size comparison between the Explorer 1000 on the top and the Explorer 500 and 240 on the bottom step. Right, let's do some tests on the Explorer 1000. The first one I'm going to do is voltage. AC voltage, of course. Let's turn on the AC pure sign output. And it's looking like 230 volts. So let's press and hold this button. 
that puts it into graphing mode. I'll just reset the scale. There's the pure sine wave output. Actually, let's get in a little closer on that. So 230.8 volts, uh, 0.05 kilohertz, which is 50 hertz, of course. And the sine wave looks pretty good to me. And watching the sine wave collapse when you turn off the AC output is quite interesting. I'll do that. And it sort of flattens off at the top. Yeah, that's quite interesting. A charging test using the mains adapter on mains. Now remember this was marked 180 watts. Well, it yields here 145 watts into this input. So let's do a DC power test from the 12 volt cigarette lighter accessory socket. That's on 2.3 amps. I'll raise that up. Six and a half amps, 10.7 amps, and that's cut out. So it's somewhere around 10 amps. Let's just quickly repeat that. It's uh, producing 10.3 amps, no problem, 125 watts on this display. Let's gradually raise that up 10.6, 10.7, 10.9, and the output has dropped away. So, yes, this has a limit at 10 point something amps maybe 10.5 that sort of figure it is a protected output and i'm not sure if this is entirely visible but the voltage at 10 amps is 12.6 12.5 volts the voltage at no amps is 12.9 volts let's check the top usb type a output and if you can't read that, I can tell you that that's 5.1 volts, 2.3 amps. So let's wind the amps up. And I've wound that up to the maximum that this tester will take, which is 3 amps. And there's no dip in voltage at all. It's 5.1 volts at 3 amps. Let's try that on the bottom socket, uh, Qualcomm Quick Charge 3. And once again, 5.1 volts, no dip in voltage, 3.0 amps. Um, there's no current limiting on these, well certainly not up to 3 amps. Let's do some Qualcomm quick charge tests. So the bottom socket seems to support quick charge 2. If I press the button, it goes to 9 volts. If I press the button again, it goes to 12 volts press the button again it doesn't seem to go to 20 volts so it seems to be limited within the range 5 to 12 volts let's switch to quick charge 3 uh, seems to support quick charge 3 I'll have to press this button a few times to get it to move from the 5 volt range into the 9 volt range which it has done so yes it certainly seems to support quick charge 3 let's plug it into the socket above which may be just labeled 5 volts, 2.4 amps. It may not be quick charge. So that's come on. Uh, we're getting a rapid flash there. I'll switch to quick charge two. Try to raise it to nine volts. And no, that one doesn't seem to be Qualcomm quick charge compatible. So I think it's just the bottom socket that's quick charge. The socket above seems to be vanilla USB type A 2.4 amps. So checking one of the USB type C outputs, I'm using my RAV power USB type C power bank. Now I know this goes up to 20 volts. Uh, so let's switch on and see what we get. And on the Ruideng display, we're getting 12 volts. And that I think concurs with the manual. Because here it says two times USB C PD output, five volt, three amp, nine volt, two amp, 12 volt 1.5 amp so it doesn't go above 12 volts and pressing and holding the button on the rav power which i know will change direction if you're connected to another usb type c power bank which can also work as an input doesn't happen this is still receiving so my belief is that these two sockets do not work as charge inputs and the current that my RAV power power bank is pulling at 12 volts is 1.51 amps. So that would appear to be the limit, the maximum that can come out of these USB type C's. I'll just confirm that with the other socket, but I imagine it'll be the same. 
and yes it's 12.1 volts 1.51 amps so 12 times 1.5 that's 18 watts so again testing these USB type C outputs I can coax out of it 5 volts 9 volts and 12 volts but nothing beyond that 12 volts is the maximum press it again and it goes back to 5 volts now I'm actually using this uh, USB meter in reverse but it doesn't matter for voltage it just wouldn't show any current if I was drawing any so just for fun let's put a load on the output of this uh, PD trigger and that's 5 volts into the lamp that's 9 volts and that's 12 volts and you can see that on the 24 volt bulb and uh, in this mode the meter shows zero amps but that's only because I'm running it backwards uh, through the meter and it's not designed to show amps in the reverse direction so now I'm just charging the Explorer 1000 with the AC adapter when it gets to 100% I will do a full discharge test so for my high power tests on the pure sine wave inverter I'm going to use this oil filled radiator and I believe the settings are 800 watts, 1200 watts and 2 kilowatts so let's try that out on the Explorer 1000 so let's turn the inverter on my meter should come alive there um, I can reset that actually so this figure down here is watts on my meter and here's watts on the jackery let's turn it on to 800 watts and uh, 804 here 858 there 1200 watts 1175 here 1250 on the jackery 2 kilowatts and it's cut out on 2 kilowatts so a few seconds on 2 kilowatts okay let's try the surge current test again I'm going to go straight to 2 kilowatts there it is 19 and 22 just literally a few seconds let's try again with the radiator on 1200 watts which I do believe it will hold so power is 11.72 here, 12.30ish there. Let's see how long it'll hold 1200 watts for. Maybe it'll hold it indefinitely. Well, it certainly doesn't seem to be rushing to shut down at what is shown here as 1160 watts. Here is 1220, bit of a discrepancy there. And I can hear the clicks and bangs from the oil filled radiator as it's warming up. So I would say that this is quite happy holding 1200 watts uh, indefinitely, I would say. Well, I suppose I should qualify that. It appears to be able to hold 1200 watts, but of course there may be some sort of gradual overheat situation which would make the jackery shut down at this power level. Fact is, I don't know. And during the charge cycle, I've noticed that even at 94%, it's still charging at 145 watts. So that's good. It doesn't start ramping down at 90%. Interesting, this is now at 99% state of charge, but it's still taking in 145 watts. So when does it do its CV, constant voltage phase? When does it do its balancing? For the full discharge test, I normally use a heater, but today I'm going to use a cryptocurrency miner. So as well as seeing uh, the total amount of power in the Explorer 1000, we'll find out how much uh, currency we can earn using a kilowatt hour of electricity. Now I did a test mine this morning and earned four cents, so that's going to be the starting point. Whatever we earn on top of four cents is what you can earn today using a kilowatt hour of electricity. Okay, we are at 100% on the Explorer 1000 display. So I'm going to turn on the AC. That will start up my cryptocurrency miner. I'm going to reset my 
energy meter so that it counts from zero. Okay, mining has started. Uh, on my meter, the miner is drawing 780 watts. It's more like around 800 and something on the Jackery display. What we're looking for, and I'm going to use my meter here, my energy meter as a reference, is uh, really one kilowatt hour, or actually it's uh, in the manual as a thousand and two watt hours. So let's see how we do it. Um, well, so far we've done 53 watt hours. That correlates with 95% battery state of charge and we've actually earned a US cent in cryptocurrencies. Ah, I just noticed that I had the charger still plugged in so I've taken that out now so we're going to get a slightly distorted reading but I'll try and allow for that. Uh, we're now at 80%, we've done 220 kilowatt hours, well we've probably done about 200 uh, watt hours, sorry. And uh, we've also made four US cents, uh, five US cents now, in cryptocurrency. See you at 50%. Okay, we're down to 51% on the power station. Uh, I've got 500 watt hours. And I'm going to knock off 20 watt hours for my earlier error of having the charger plugged in. Probably about on track. And in terms of crypto, uh, 13 cents minus 4 is 9 cents. I'll be back near the end. I thought I'd try and capture the moment where the display flashes on and off to indicate that there's only 20% left, which is now. It'll happen again at 10%. And once again, I wanted to catch the moment at 10% where the display flashes on and off to warn you that you're getting low on power. And uh, the Explorer 1000 is now down to 2%. That's dropping quite quickly. I expect it to uh, shut the AC off fairly soon. And of course the drone of the cryptocurrency <laughs> miner will disappear which will be a bit of a relief but we'll just wait for it to get down to 0% and then we'll get the final tally of course my energy meter will switch off but that's okay because it's got a battery backup so we can read the final figure from that how are we doing in terms of cryptocurrency well 22 cents minus the 4 cents that I started off with that's 18 cents in cryptocurrency for one kilowatt hour of energy. That's a lot better. Oh, my laptop switched off. That's a lot better than the smart export guarantee where they're promising me about 4p for uh, pence per kilowatt hour. So you're better off mining than exporting to the grid. Okay, just waiting for this to go to zero percent now and there it goes <laughs> oh it's very quiet in here now so what do we get 0 0.909 so we didn't quite get the uh 1002 watt hours however if you factor in that the uh pure sine wave inverter is probably only about 90 percent efficient then you'd expect 900 watt hours from a 1000 watt hour power station. However, the other two power stations, the Explorer 500 and the Explorer 240, both gave their full uh, rated capacities on the energy meter. This one's fallen a bit short. Oh, and I also need to deduct 20 watt hours for my error at the beginning, keeping the power connected. But that's the final result solar tests on the Jackery Explorer 1000 and it's currently hooked up to a Solar Saga 100 watt solar panel and we're getting over 100 watts so that's pretty good and there's also a little bit of hunting there so that kind of gives confidence that there's MPPT going on and it's actively searching out the maximum power point 
Now with the Explorer 1000 you do get this gift which is the Solar Saga parallel adapter which converts two of the 7.9 millimeter round plugs to a Anderson power pole so let's give that a try. So the Anderson power pole red and black go in here let's plug them in and then I've got two sockets which will take these connectors so let's take that out and plug it into one of these and see what we get and I'm now getting 93 94 95 watts but I've got a feeling the panels warmed up a bit because if I take that out of that connector and plug it into this one just wait for that charging circuit to kick in I think we'll get about the same warm solar panel around 96 97 watts so it looks like it's about the same through the Anderson connector as it is through the circular connector okay now let's try two solar saga 100s paralleled into the parallel adapter and we're getting well 120 watts which is a little bit surprising and it looks to me like the Anderson input is actually current limited or power limited to 120 watts so we're not getting 200 watts which we potentially could have through those two 100 watt panels now I just wanted to try taking one of these out of the parallel adapter and plugging it into the other input and we don't seem to be getting the benefit of that at all in fact what seems to happen is this unit prioritizes the circular input over the Anderson input so I think what it's done now is it's switched to the solar panel on that circular input and we can show that to be the case by unplugging the other one from the parallel adapter and nothing changes on the display so I don't think it can use these two at the same time um, I'm not sure what the power limit on the circular connector is because I can't parallel two circular connectors and put them into a circular connector but certainly the Anderson input is limited to 120 watts now I have a theory about this Anderson input um, possibly it and its charging circuit and this paralleling adapter were designed for the Solar Saga 60 solar panel so you put two of those in parallel and that's 120 watts um, the only other mitigation I can think of for this 120 limit is for overcast skies so if you've got two panels not in full sun say each of them is developing 50 watts well then of course by paralleling two you will get 100 watts but as it stands this input circuit limits the power to 120 watts using the AC adapter into the round input socket approximately 145 watts now what if I put the AC adapter into the paralleling connector what does the other circuit give me and the answer is about the same 140 something 142 watts so are these two charge input circuits essentially the same but they don't parallel in other words you can't use them both at the same time I mean you can try to but you don't get twice the power they do look as if they're essentially the same charge circuit so to sum up the Explorer 1000 is a very compact one kilowatt hour portable power station and used in conjunction with the Solar Saga 100 solar panel you get the full 100 watts of charging but if you use two Solar Saga 100 solar panels and this Solar Saga parallel adapter you only get an additional 20 watts of charging good connectivity on this unit you've got two AC outlets also USB-C on this device you've got two of them although they are limited to 18 watts each so that's the Jackery Explorer 1000 Cheerio!